Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. łapka w górę, śmiało będziecie te pytania zadawać. Yes, I played a little bit of American a football. Little. Yeah, yeah, not not nothing big at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it got me into training because I wanted to get bigger and stronger, and that's how I kind of accidentally got into fitness and got into training. Yeah. Do you miss uh, some part of the football, like the move itself, or the explosiveness of the of the football I, training? I think everything with American football, from what I remember. Um, it's different aspects. You have the defense, you have the offense, you have the safety, special teams. Um, so it, it, you have to read the whole game. Um, but the key thing about that I loved about it is just the power and the explosiveness of it. And, so um, you try to incorporate this power and the explosiveness in your fitness workouts right now? Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of things that I do that you explode and do a lot of stuff. St um, you, do, you do a lot of explosive movement with. So it works very well with what I do. I mean, even things to like the, the power movement or the compound movement that like you say, the squats, the yeah. deadlift, 
you know, it's it, it's a key vital um, component of that. Uh, do you think that the movements with the great acceleration, the great great force output, is giving you the physique that you've got, that you're nicely shredded, you're uh, full? You're in shape all year round. Do you think that with static movements only or I, I isolation? Th only? I think I think with um, trying to get the best balanced physique, as I like to call it, I don't like using the word perfect. I like the word balance. I think it comes down to program design. That's one. Um, get a good program that works for you. So yeah, a little bit of everything. I always tell people is good. You want a little bit of strength in there, obviously. Um, you want some variational movements in there. That's key. Um, stuff that's going to help you in terms of definition, and that's why I do a lot of high reps. So with my kind of program, I tend to get a little bit of everything in there. I'll pyramid up, for example, if I'm doing chest, I pyramid up to maybe 60 kg um, um, presses on dumbbells, and then I come back down. And the going up is building strength, obviously, and coming back down is doing some drop sets. Uh, time yeah. on the test, and then working Correct. on the strength. Exactly. So I try to get a little bit of everything there where I'm sculpting, but I'm also I also want power. I also want strength. Well, that's why I push myself to the max. Um, so when, when you're designing the program or designing the routine mm -hmm. in a simple day, mm -hmm. you think that it's better to incorporate the power outputs, mm -hmm. the more time on the tension, and metabolic stress in one workout mm -hmm. or do you think that splitting in during the week or during the couple sessions would also work? So I've got the, let's say, chest routine, mm -hmm. split it into three days, mm -hmm. mixed maybe with a small group mm -hmm. on the back. Mm -hmm. So one day I'm hitting hard, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, weight, mm -hmm. uh, great volume, low reps. Mm -hmm. The other day I'm coming, doing the same muscle groups, mm -hmm. but more time on tension, more pocket trophy, mm -hmm. more bodybuilding work. Mm -hmm. And the last day, you're just pumping up drop sets and uh, yeah. the volume. High, 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 high. High. Um, that's a good question. That question actually really depends on what your goals are, yep. uh, who that person is, what they're looking to achieve. Um, if they, if, if, if strength and and a combination of everything is what they're looking to achieve, yeah, they could train that way. If they're looking to compete and just pure isolation then it can change it up and isolate it one week at a time so I really think that depends on the person but having that said for me anyway I prefer to isolate it and train it and not do it back to back to back um, just because in terms of growth and for bodybuilding for what I do that doesn't work but if it's more athletic system like say for example if I was a football player then yeah that would probably work because I need that you know what I mean um, but as a bodybuilder, I like to give it some time. So I wouldn't train it, even though I'm training in a different style, I wouldn't train it like that back to back to back. I'll give it like several days and then hit it again or, or so. I'll train it at least twice a week. Um, so it really depends on the person and their style of training. Do you think that focusing on the training itself mm -hmm. and working hard itself will bring the results in form of shape? Mm -hmm. But focusing on the shape will bring you all the shape mm -hmm. without the power. Yeah, I think um, the first one that you mentioned, you have to, you have to have a little bit of everything in there. You, I, I firmly believe that. If you train one way, then you're one dimensional. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so you need a combination of um, if you power. Need to yes, if you want to be complete, you need as much as I do a lot of drop sets and supersets. Don't get me wrong, I like to push it. So I would I would push the 60, 65 kg dumbbell presses, you yeah, know, yeah. and then come down. So that's how if you do it that way, you you'll be well rounded. A well rounded bodybuilder is better than a one dimensional bodybuilder, and we all see that. A one dimensional bodybuilder will be someone that benches all the time, that looks like that, probably has no legs, and just have a huge upper body, big chest, big shoulders, but he sits on the bench all the time. You know, a balanced bodybuilder would have everything. He may not be as big as that one-dimensional bodybuilder, but his physique is more appealing, more aesthetic. And he'd be like, wow, yeah, we know he has to gain size because he's a smaller guy, but he has a nice balanced physique that's very desirable to the eye. And for me, I prefer that. And, um, and it's just work ethic. It comes down to working hard. At the end of the day, it, it, you, if you have that drive and that work ethic, it takes time. I tell people, for me, fitness, this journey, it doesn't, there's not an end or finish line. 
there's no ending. It's a continuous thing. It's a lifestyle. So for me, there's no timeline on it. Like most people, like, oh, I want to get this body, you know, for the summertime, I want to look that way. I never had that. Because once you have that... I posted yesterday on Instagram, you want the summer body year-round, because you've got the body year-round. That people ask me, so why why do you stay conditioned all year-round? Or why you... Because... Because that's what it's I do. Body. There's no timeline. Body, There's body, no. Body. I don't get conditioned and then I stop, and then I take I a am. break for six weeks. No, if it's a lifestyle, is what we do all the time. Yeah. So I am what I am because I have passion in it, and because I do it 365 days a year or whatever, year around, and and that's it. So yeah, there's not a really an off season for me, you know. So I just do it all the time. The moment you have a timeline on there or an expiry date then once you get there, your motivation so, is over. Yeah. Your passion, your drive is over. For me, it's, it's I never set a timeline. So, so it's a lifestyle, it's, it's something yeah. I do all the time, so I will continue to do it till I draw my last breath. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro.